Hi, it's Dave. And this video is going to be a little different than what I normally create. I am going to talk about Excel, but I'm not going to talk about communicating financial data visually. What I want to share with you in this video is a workbook and some techniques that parents can use to keep their kids sharp at math during this school shutdown. Over 15 years ago, when our kids were in elementary school, when they were teaching math, they used math minutes. So what that was is they would give them a list of problems and they'd have to solve as many as they could in one minute. So to help our kids prepare for this and get better at it, I created new math worksheets every night using Excel. So to help parents out during this school shutdown, I put together an Excel workbook that you can download using the link in the description of this video. It contains 11 math worksheets that you can easily adjust to match the skill level of your kids. I want to walk you through the techniques I use to create this workbook because I want you to be able to have the skills to create your own workbooks or adjust them so that they fit the skill level that your child needs to practice. Let's start with a brief tour of the workbook that you downloaded. You see that it has a number of worksheet tabs. The first tab is the input tab and the rest are the different worksheets based on math level and type of math such as more basic level addition. We have um, multiplication, again basic level multiplication, up to advanced addition, and advanced division. So let's start on the input tab and take a look at what we've got here. And the key is the two inputs that I've defined in cells B7 and B8. B7 is for the more basic sheets and B8 is for the more advanced sheets. Now these numbers drive all the problems on the worksheets. So if you want to make easier math, enter a smaller number here. And enter a higher number if you want harder math. I've set the basic sheets maximum to 12. Here you can see I've entered that in cell B7. So when we look at the multiplication sheet here, the table, what we see is that the problems include numbers up to but not exceeding 12. Now if your child isn't at that level yet, go back to the input sheet and enter a smaller number. So if I enter, let's say, 6 in here, take a look at that multiplication worksheet, notice now none of the numbers are above 6. All the problems are easier because that's the level that your child is at. So the first input here, which we had 6, I'm going to enter the 12 again, that drives all the numbers on the basic level math sheets and the number in B8, cell B8, is used on the advanced sheets. And again, you can adjust it up or down as needed. To generate a new set of sheets, just select the tab you want. We'll select our multiplication tab again and press the F9 key. When you press the F9 key each time, it recalculates the sheet and generates a new worksheet. So it's very easy to quickly generate worksheets each time you need them. So the tab names, we'll go back to our input, the tab names I've coded here and they indicate first of all whether the problems are oriented horizontally or vertically. So you can use the sheet in the orientation that the teacher is practicing in class. The second character indicates the skill level. So the B indicates basic, the A is advanced. And the third part of the name is the math skill that they, they are practicing or that sheet allows them to practice. So let's take a look at our first worksheet here and we'll go up and take a look at how the formulas are created to generate all these numbers. So we'll take a look at A1 and you see the formula up in our formula bar up at the top here. It uses the RAND function. RAND is a function that generates a random number to, between 0 and 1 each time the sheet is recalculated or anything is entered on the sheet because that forces a recalculation. So it takes that number and multiplies it by the maximum for this level of sheet on the input tab. So because this is a basic sheet, it uses B7 on that input tab. It then rounds it to a whole number. So I'm only using whole numbers on these sheets and that is driven by the zero, the last argument in the rounding function. Now if you want to introduce decimals because your kids are progressing to that more difficult math, you can always change that last argument to be one for one decimal or two and so on. 
So again, by using this rand function, it makes it easy to generate all those new sets of numbers and new worksheets every single time. And this technique of creating a random number and rounding it is used in to calculate almost every number in all of the worksheets. In the advanced skill worksheets, of course, the formula references cell B8, which is the maximum input, input for the advanced worksheets on our input sheet. Now, there are two types of sheets where there's a slight difference in the formulas. In the two basic subtraction sheets, so let me take a look at the subtraction sheet here for you. What you'll notice is I always want to, the answer to be a positive number because that's the first set of math skills that kids need to learn. So the way I've done that, ensured that, is in the formula for the first number is I add to the randomly generated number, I add the inputs tab cell B7. So what I do there is I add the maximum from that input sheet to the randomly generated number and then subtracting from it is just the randomly generated number. So that always makes sure that it is a positive number. Now it could be zero sometimes, but it will always be zero or above. Now if your child wants to practice negative numbers, of course you can change that formula and simply copy it to the other cells that are similar to that. So it gives you that flexibility, but I want you to know that about the subtraction sheets. The division sheets are the other place where we have some slight changes here in our formulas. So the way that this is done is I've set it up so that all the problems have a whole number answer. So there are no decimals or fractions. And the way this is done is to generate two numbers. So C1 is the first number I generate in this particular problem. So C1, we have our random number. And then the next one is E1, which is the answer. That's the other random number. So I generate those two numbers and then to create the division uh, math problem in A1 you'll notice I say multiply E1 by C1 and that generates the number that they need to start with in the division problem. So why don't you see a number in E1 even though there's a formula there? Well what I've done is I've turned the text color for all of these numbers to white which is the same as the background in Excel. So it's a trick to hide the number needed to generate the problem. In the advanced division sheet, just a note here, what I've done is, is in the um, number here, I've used the maximum basic input as the denominator so that the problems aren't too hard, but the answer is going to be drawn from cell B8. So again, you can adjust any of these worksheets to make them harder or not quite as hard by adjusting the inputs. And if you want to, you can adjust the formulas that they're using as well. So let's take a quick tour of all the tabs so you can see all the worksheets if you haven't checked them out already. We start with our basic horizontal addition, multiplication, and subtraction, and then our division. So we've seen all of those already. And then we orient some of these vertically. So we do some vertical addition and vertical multiplication problems and some subtraction problems vertically as well. So those are the, the key ones that the kids are going to practice in the lower grades with that more basic math. In the advanced math, we get into adding larger numbers and adding three of them together or four of them together. And then we have advanced multiplication where we have up to three digit numbers because I've put 500 in as the maximum. And we really start to challenge them on the math when they're multiplying. The division, we saw this earlier, we have some larger numbers to practice division on. So we have all of the different worksheets that you can use depending on what type of skill they're practicing and how hard you want to make those particular problems. Now when you want to create the actual worksheet for your child to complete, you don't want to give them this particular uh, workbook because it's not going to necessarily be all of the problems you want and you don't want them to, to mess up any formulas. So what you want to do is you want to create something that they can complete. And I want to show you five different methods you can use to actually create something your child can complete. The first is to just simply print the particular worksheet. So if I go to our, our basic edition worksheet, I go to file, I go to print, and it does the basic printing of the worksheet. So you see all of the 
problems here. You could obviously copy more if you wanted to fill the page, depending on how much you want them to practice. And it only prints the active sheet. So you see it says page one of one. And this is what we used back in the day. And that was so that we could watch them work on it at the kitchen table. But paper worksheets don't work for everybody today. So the next option you have on the worksheet is to create a PDF file. So we click on File, Save a Copy, and we can put in a name. So let's say this is uh, Addition, and we say this is the Monday worksheet they're going to work on. And then in the File list, we drop that down, scroll down till we find PDF, and then we can simply save it. This saves it as a PDF file. That your child can then open, especially if they have a device where they can write the answers on the screen with some sort of a, a pen or stylus. This could be a way that works really well for them. So that's option number two. Option number three is to create an actual Excel workbook of the sheets that you want them to create. Now you're going to want to use again a different workbook than the one you're using here to generate the problems. What we're going to do is I'm going to highlight the cells that I want to copy, all of these ones here, and I'm going to say Control C Copy, and then I'm going to go to a blank workbook that I've set up, and I'm going to, instead of just Control V Paste, because that would paste the formulas in, and we don't want that, we just want the numbers, so I'm going to go to the drop down arrow below Paste, and I'm going to say Paste Values. Now what this does is it simply pastes all of the numbers and the plus and the equal signs here into this particular sheet. Now you can adjust the column widths if you want to uh, fit more on there. You can uh, set up a tab for each day if you wanted. If so, if I wanted to have a, for the next day, I could set up another tab. And one thing to note about the division problems. Because remember, that was a, a little bit of a different on how we set them up. So let me just show you. If I go to our division problems here, and I select, I'll just select some of them for now, and I say Copy, Control C, I go to our new workbook, and I go Paste Values. Notice what happens. It pastes all the answers in so they can see it because it just took the values, it didn't take the formatting. So anytime you're copying the division worksheets, you want to go in and delete those answers because otherwise it's not going to be very much practice if they already have the answers. So setting up an additional workbook in Excel is one way to do it. Now the challenge with this method though is that your kids may easily figure out that they can complete all the problems simply using formulas in Excel which is great for building Excel skills but not so great for practicing their math skills. Fourth method is to copy the problems into a Word document. So I'll go back to our worksheet here and uh, let's try the multiplication this time. I'm going to select all of the problems that I want them to complete. I'm going to say Control C to copy. Notice I, I select also the answer column here, column K. You'll see why in a moment. So I go back to Word and I go to a blank Word document and say Control V Paste. You'll notice what happens is Word pastes it in as a Word table. So what this means is that it gives a space for them to actually type the answer in, which is exactly what you want. It makes it so easy for them. So they just open up this Word document in Word Online, on a tablet, a uh, phone even, and they can look at the problems and practice and type the answer in because Word already gives them a spot to put that answer in. If you want to create multiple worksheets on multiple pages, just go down to the bottom of the table and press Control Enter. That's the key combination to get a new page in Word and you can add another set of problems there. Create uh, an entire uh, Word document for a week, for example, and then they just work through one of those each week. The final method that I want to show you, go back to our worksheet here, the final method I wanted to show you is to copy the problems into a PowerPoint document. So similar to copying Word, we start by highlighting all the cells, including the answer cells. Copy, Control C, Copy. Switch over to PowerPoint and say Control V, Paste. And it pastes it in as a PowerPoint table. 
So similar to uh, the note that I gave you for Excel, when you're copying to Word or to PowerPoint, if you've copied the division worksheets, make sure you delete the answers. Now in PowerPoint what I've done is I've created a PowerPoint document that has a page that is portrait and it's a letter size page. So if I wanted to print it I could. It looks like a worksheet that they might have in school. The table by default has a gray background when it comes into PowerPoint so you can just go up to the table design to the shading and say no fill and it removes that shading. But because this is a table in PowerPoint I'll just zoom in on it so you can see it easier here. Because it's a table, they can simply click into that table cell and type their answer in. So they can again open it up on any document, on any tablet or uh, online, wherever they want, and easily see their problems and fill them in. The nice thing about PowerPoint, as you notice here, is it makes it easy to you know, make it a little more colorful, a little more fun for them. So I've added some icons. These are in Office 365 if you have that. I've added their name, some fancy lettering there, uh, reflection. So it makes it a little more, uh, let's say, inviting for them to actually complete the practice that you're wanting them to complete. So again, go back. Anytime you want to generate a new worksheet, we just press F9 and all the numbers change, you now have a new worksheet. So it makes it very easy for you to quickly create a whole bunch of worksheets for them to work on and customized to the level that they're at. Use this workbook, the techniques that I've shown you, to create all the worksheets that your child needs in order to practice their math skills during this time when they're not in school and practicing with their teacher. I hope this workbook and the Excel techniques I shared with you help you as you help your kids practice their math skills. If you have to report financial data and want to do it more visually so the insights are clear to executives, subscribe to my channel for videos that will help you in your job. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. Share any comments you have down below as well. Thanks for watching.